video. I got a new video. Alicia Michelle. Hey girl. I'm ready to go. How you feeling? Your vision fan. Are you ready for the show? <laughs> Hello, 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 folks. We've had a couple of days to debrief from what went down on the stage in Liverpool. And this is like, you know, it's sort of a bittersweet uh, stream that I typically do video that I put together because in some ways I like it because we have all the information. There's not a lot of speculating that has to go down um, on this video. We can just, you know, keep it focused on actually like what happened. We don't have to be speculating about a lot of things. We have all of this information. So thank you so much to everyone who has joined today. I am so excited. So excited to get into this because there's a lot that we got to break down um, in this conversation, period. Um, so hello, folks. Hello from Germany. Hello. Hello from the UK. All right. Well, let's just kick it off. Let's just, we're going to start from the top. We're going to take it from the tippity tippity top. Sweden won. Sweden won. Now, I think once we knew that Lorien was coming to Eurovision and before she was even selected from Melody Festival and Sweden began to occupy that number one slot uh, on the betting odds and really stood there. I think Finland put up a good fight. I would not have been surprised to see Finland win. I would not have been upset <laughs> to see Finland win. As you all know, my kind of top three that I was percolating with was Sweden, Finland, and Spain. And I think for me with Finland, it creeped up for me more because as I started really, really hopping in the playlist, I just began to root myself like a little bit more in what I was like gravitating towards. And y'all know more often than not, I prefer entries that feel a little bit more risky, a little bit more out of the box. That is what I like to consume. And as much as I love Tattoo and as much as I love Lorian as a performer, you know, that's not necessarily, it's not reinventing the wheel of pop music. You know, it's not necessarily giving me anything uh, fresh per se from that perspective. And one of the things that I love about Eurovision is I like kind of coming to Eurovision to hear things things that I might not hear, you know, um, on the radio here in the States in particular. So to me, I always give a little bit of edge personally. If you're asking me what I personally like, I tend to give a little bit more edge to the entries that are a little bit more risky, a little bit more daring. And so, you know, ultimately, Lorian won the jury. She really kind of toppled the jury. And let's be real. I, I began to realize uh, maybe like two weeks prior to Eurovision that I kind of was like, a lot of the people who are on the juries are deep in these Eurovision streets. And Lorian is sort of the example of what we see as, as a turning point in the song contest. So a lot of these people might even think like, I wouldn't even be in the position I'm in right now, sort of judging and interested in Eurovision had we not had this shift in the contest in 2012. So it began more, it became a little bit more difficult for me to realistically see this body of people people not showering her with 12 points. It, it became harder for me. But then I conversely was sort of like, well, maybe they're going to look at the position that they're in and sort of say, oh, well, people are just going to assume that I'm going to give something to her. So maybe we'll put her second. So that was sort of the mind that I was in. But even still, I was thinking that she would come, you know, second or third. I didn't think she was ever going to win the televote. Like, I just I just didn't think that that was going to happen. So even if she had come second, and then second with the televote, she was winning. There was a scenario where she was going to win. So it just, it, it became like, this is, this is just what's going to sort of happen if we look at it from the math. But that doesn't mean that I can't hold out hope uh, that we might have seen a different outcome. Like, you know, it just was like, this is what's making sense to me. Katia won the televote, and we knew that, we knew that that was going to happen. 
Okay. <laughs> I remember when there were conversations about like Austria maybe getting it. Like I, I remember the conversations, but I was like, uh, I, can't, I was like, uh, I just, I just really feel like this is the televote winner. I could have been here for Norway winning the televote. That was the, that was the force that I was kind of looking at like, Ooh, Ooh, Norway, I could see maybe being something just because that song was already a hit. And as we know, Norway came third with the public. Norway came third with the public vote. So, you know, not a crazy thing to think. Um, and Ukraine still did very well with the public coming in at fourth place. Analyzing the jury, y'all, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the jury results felt slightly strange to me, slightly strange to me and every year I kind of feel like we end up getting a case of the jury picking like two maybe three entries where they're kind of like yeah it won't be crazy if I give this entry points but like does it make sense <laughs> maybe not and 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 this is no shade to those entries but it's like I feel like some juries will use certain entries as a scapegoat. Like, oh, well, we'll just vote for this one, even though it doesn't really make sense. And it's not even maybe in alignment with what our public is sort of used to consuming. And like, and but it won't look crazy for us to give them points. You on the train that I'm on, you hearing what I'm talking about? Because I, I, I don't know. Um... 10 says the jury did not make sense, choosing five entries at most and leaving the rest to fend for themselves. Um, let me see. Um, uh, uh, Alicia, also some ESC 2023 20, singers being a little disrespe disrespectful. I don't I don't know about that. Um, AA, you mean Cyprus and Estonia. Um, Cyprus, I felt like we thought that Cyprus would maybe get some jury love. Like, so that didn't feel crazy to me. I love bridges. Don't get me wrong. Like, I remember we talked about this. I was like, if I'm talking about a ballad that's giving me something slightly more complex and, and a vocal that's reliable, uh, you know, I'm going with bridges. I would give that the edge over Lithuania personally. But I thought Lithuania had a little bit more of that anthemic quality that jurors would actually like and the public would maybe gravitate towards. But, you know, I mean, I guess good on Estonia, like kudos to you like you came in the top 10 but I I don't know if that song needed to be top 10 I don't know I, I don't know it's I don't know because it's it's hard because I'm like I do like the song so it's hard maybe my it's hard for me to kind of put on the objective hat maybe and maybe I'm I'm struggling because I just do feel like the jury really pulled things in a direction that felt uh, slightly odd to me as a whole. Um, and I think sort of left a couple of countries on the table that felt strange to me, but maybe just strange to me personally. But let me, um, let me do this. So we're still focusing on our big wins. So obviously Lorian, obviously Finland, Katia, big winners, I think coming away at the night, but I'm gonna give you some big wins in my book. Okay. So one, Albania top 10 in the televote when everybody was talking about how, you know, Albania wasn't going to qualify. And I was having an existential Eurovision crisis because I was like, I just don't see how I get Eurovision in the grand final without this song in the mix. So kudos to Albania on that. I'm happy. I would also say, you know, no one in the grand final having nil point. I thought that we were in a year where that was probably likely not to occur. But I, I'm really happy that we didn't have like anyone standing up there with zero next to them. Uh, because I do think that everyone showed up and, and tried to do their very best. Speaking of people doing their very best, I'm going to give a little bit of kudos to Poland. Because Blanca did everything that she needed to do to improve from that national selection performance. And I'm going to give a gold star for most improved. Okay, I'm giving a gold star for most improved. Because let's be real, at the national selection, that wasn't even the best bop that we had. Execution. That wasn't the best bop that we had. Cuba, if we're talking about pop execution at Poland's national selection, Cuba probably was giving us that. So if they wanted to go with a boppy, fresh pop song, that was the better, better executed piece, if you ask me. 
but she really rose to the occasion. She took the feedback that that was given to her. And then that delegation did everything that they needed to do to raise the banner. And I wish that more countries would do that. When you are sort of put in a position where people are mad at the selection, instead of leaning into it and failing harder and faster, I think it, it's incumbent upon you to do your very best. Some countries didn't do that this year. And, and it's really a shame because it just doesn't serve the artist. And this is literally their global introduction, you know, shameful. But I but I'm giving the kudos to Poland. Now, I will say, you know, because some of y'all really were fighting, you know, when everyone had Romania at the bottom of their list and everything. But Romania and San Marino got no point in the semifinal. Zero. 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 Mm. So all that fighting that everybody was doing for them entries, where was the real fight when it came to, you know, putting your money where your mouth is? Okay, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. All right. And then the big numbers, you know, big numbers. I mean, ultimately, Sweden and Finland were only separated by 57 points. Now, that's still a lead, but 57 points, which I think is real. And um and yeah, I let's let's overall let's move on and just talk about the overall production. I loved the hosting this year. I loved the hosting this year. It was great. It was seamless. I loved the styling of our hosts this year. I liked the sketches that they had in the middle. And for the most part, I liked most of the interval acts this year. I would say notably the inter- well, notably that flag parade, best flag parade we've ever had. Period. And I don't know, Sweden might be able to, to, to top it next year. But that's my favorite flag parade. I loved how we had the flag, the people processing out. The music was great. I mean, woohoo. And then we had um, sweet dreams I'm made of this. And then we brought back some of our great Ukrainian performers in the mix in that. That flag parade was top notch. It was fabulous. I, I I loved it. I loved I loved that flag parade. I loved that moment. And for some productions, I feel like they like the flag parade was kind of like an afterthought. Like, oh, just let's have the people out there. And no, this is a moment to showcase. This this was this was a moment to showcase. Um, I think we had like a we had like some green room stuff in the semifinals. I liked that. So the production was top notch. But I'm gonna tell you. Overall, if I'm going to rate the production, I'm going with a B plus. I want to go with an A minus, but the boo-boo of all boo-boos was the sound mixing. And now remember, you know, when I first was doing my, uh, my podcast and everything, and they told us the technical team. So then we didn't have to worry about people saying, oh, the BBC has messed up this. Some people were fumbling the bag with that, y'all. We can't be blaming the BBC. I mean, technically, I guess, you know, overall broadcaster shows. But they told us the people who were in charge. So guess who's going to get, because this person really got an F. All right. And so he's just pulling down the average of everybody else. And that is Robert Edwards, Bob Edwards. Bob was in charge of the sound mixing. He was our head of sound. Come on now, y'all. Was that sound good? Was that sound good? It sure wasn't. We had audio issues in the press room sound. So there were times when, and and I'll tell you what makes me irked is now you're kind of messing with my credibility. If I'm saying what I'm hearing doesn't sound good and then some people are like, oh, well, what I heard was good. Now you have me out here sounding like a crazy person because I don't even have like real sound to like judge. So Bob Edwards, Robert Edwards, you, you had a resume, you did the VMAs, at, or no, no, you did like the EMAs at one point. So you have a resume. What happened? What happened, Robert? So the overall team is getting, <clears throat> is getting a B plus because the sound was off. Because here's the thing. It's a Eurovision Song Contest. If the sound is janky, if we're having sound issues, I mean, that's kind of a principal thing that we need to have, you know, together. Like, that has to be perfect. That has to be perfect. Okay, Robert. Anyway, let's talk about the robberies. 
let's move on and talk about what was what was robbed. And and I, let me just hop into this. Santiago, the sound mixing was awful, especially in Spain's performance. I mean, it was it was bad. It was it, it was bad throughout. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Come on, Robert. Anyway, big robberies. Spain last in the televote. Y'all know Manuel Navarro? Do it for your lover. Got five points in the televote too that year. (laughs) I mean, what does that say to people? Now, I could understand it not maybe being your taste. I understand like it's an acquired taste. Like, I, I get it. I get it's an acquired taste. But this is the Eurovision Song Contest. Aren't we supposed to be celebrating, like, culture, like, diversity? What does this say when one of the most ethnic entries, ethnic and forward-thinking entries, is last in the televote? What does that tell people? What does that tell countries? I'm going to fill in the blank for you. What it tells them is, don't come here with anything ethnic. Don't come here with anything interesting. Come here with some bland, basic-ass pop song and, like, call it a damn day. Like, that's what it tells people. You know that, right? It makes it less interesting and it makes it less comfortable for people to want to like go and take the risk. Because even though I look at, you know, cha-cha-cha, risky, I do think it's out of the box to a certain extent, but it's a little bit mainstream. Like, I mean, I've heard music like that, like, you know, in DC, in DC like in the charts in America, you know, it's it's rap, it's sort of hip hop. It's got a, you know, it's got a little bit of like an electro like phase. So, you know, it it, it isn't that like... um Maybe avant-garde is the word that I'm looking for. It's not that avant-garde. I mean, Georgia didn't make it through. Now, of course, the lyrics could have been better. I think her vocal tone could have been better. I don't think the sound, I think the audio mixing of Georgia's was not great. It did not showcase her voice in the way that it needed to be. But yeah, I mean, (sighs) Mr. Locage, uh, Spain was top five performance in my book. Uh, Scrambled Egg Spain was right before Sweden too. Um, May didn't be ready for Chanel 2.0 next year. Um, Gabe, I love ethnic entries the most, but Spain sounded really bad to me. Um, yeah, I I just, that's just, to me, that's the number one boo-boo in my book of this year. It just, like, she never performed it bad. (laughs) Like, Like, and in a Eurovision year that was so much about execution, because that's where people really fell down this year, was in the execution. (sighs) Like, I just, I just really don't want to hear the chatter from folks. Like, if Spain were to send, like, a cute girl dipping and doing it dancing next year, I don't want to hear the Chanel 2.0 comparisons. Because they really could have this year just sent us you know, Charles 2.0, you know, they could have just sent Agony, but instead, you know, they chose Blanca Paloma, something interesting, something risky, something different, something that was a shift. So then you wouldn't have to worry about like Chanel comparisons. And then how were they, you know, how were they rewarded? They weren't. So if they turn around and then give us that next year, I really don't want to hear it. Like, cause I don't, I don't want to hear the foolishness. Like it just doesn't make any sense, you know? Like, what are they supposed to do? What? Are, yeah, what do you do? What do you do? Um, and we're going to we're gonna get back. I, I'm going to come back to this after, but I want to just keep going through the show. Um, I want to break this down for y'all. I looked at the overall top 10 for the public. I looked at the overall top 10 of Eurovision 2023. I looked at the public, like, televoting score. And then I looked at the juries. When we analyze the top 10 and I really just did like three categories because I really want much else to analyze I analyzed how many songs were pop songs how many were rock songs and how many were like kind of out of the box ethnic entries so in the overall top 10 we had seven pop songs seven we had one rock song and the rock song that's showing up throughout is Australia okay um yeah I think I, I wrote the note whatever Um, so, uh, so, so we had, so then with the rock entries, one in each bucket, there was only one. So in the overall top 10, it was seven in the public and the jury score six. So each, each just had pop songs, six. And then for the out of the box three, 
with love at the Eurovision Song Contest for me, for me, and I'm an American. This is not my competition. Um, I feel like we should be having at least four or five of them entries should feel ethnic. Like in some way, shape or form. Um, yeah, like, so yeah, I think it was Australia was one, like in the public vote, um, Croatia, I think was in the top, I think it was Croatia that was in the top 10. And then for the jury, it was Australia. I think that was in the top 10. So, um, I don't know, y'all. I just, I'm kind of like, I, I just, I, I just, I'm, I'm just sort of like, I feel like when we have conversations, and maybe it's because over on our pocket of, of the internet, we kind of like the out of the box stuff. Maybe that's what it is. Like our bucket of the internet, our conversation, our space, all of y'all watching, we like kind of the out of the box stuff. So maybe it's us. You know, maybe that's just us and we are the minority in the space. Because it was, I felt like we had so, like I felt like we had a nice mix of genre diversity this year, but I don't feel like I'm seeing that real mix of genre diversity when we analyze the top 10 ultimately. Um, and if people are wondering what I consider like out of the box or ethnic, I, I'm, I'm saying, you know, Finland, I'm considering out of the box. It's sort of like, you know, kind of on a category unto itself. Spain is, you know, out of the box, but you know, like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I mean, the juries did have Spain in their top. Yeah. So I had I had Spain and then um, Czechia. I had a sort of out of the box ethnic, even though yeah, I mean, even though you could argue that it's a pop song, but I think you know with the rap in it, the the native language, you know, so that to me I would consider out of the box. I just. Given all the genre diverse genre diversity that we had this year, some of the risks that we had this year sonically, I, I just I don't know what we're gonna end up with next year. I just don't know what the sauce of songs we're gonna have next year. Um, and when I look at the non qualifiers, four of them were pop, five were rock entries, and one out of the box. If we look at our our non qualifiers, I just I just it's just sad that. That when you take risks, so it's like, I was thinking that we had turned the page a little bit with Contracta last year. I just, I just thought that maybe, maybe we had turned, turned the page a little bit. Um, yeah, Joey, I'm scared that if we do 100% televoting again, that in a couple of years, we're back in the unserious circus era, like 2006, 2008, many joke entries entered with artists mocking the contest a lot. I think the contest has graduated beyond that point. I, I I think so. I think the contest has graduated beyond that point. So I'm I'm not worried. Um, I'm not worried about that. Um, so Alexander, every year is different. So maybe next year an out of the box entry will win. When's the last time we had an out of the box song win though? When's the last time it happened? I wouldn't say, because some people might, I mean, probably 1944-ish, ish, 2016, mm, I don't know, uh, Georgios, okay, Alicia, do you want the juries to stay or leave after this since televoters gravitated more towards pop than juries, um, well, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not saying that uh, they did, I'm saying that actually the public and jury actually were sort of in alignment, each if I look at the top 10 of the public vote, it was at, it, both of the, like both jury and televote, they both had six pop songs in there. might've been different ones, but they both had six pop songs. And then rock, it, it, they both had one rock song and they both had three out of the box, like kind of ethnic entries. So actually it just was different songs, but actually the public and televote were more or less on the same trend, which is why I feel a little bit like, okay, what are we doing here? Like, what are we trying to have the song contest be? You know, is this the Eurovision pop song contest? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Jack fan. Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you for the money. I don't, you didn't need to do all that. 
Um, do you think the jury system must change? I have long time said that I think that it should not be 50-50. I think we have 40% for the jury, 60%, and that's how the score should be weighted. I think the televote should have a little bit more power, just slightly. So I think it should be a 60-40 split, juries, and t- and televote down at the end. Um, yeah, period. And thank you so much. Um, so let's move on, uh, because I'm moving to my section where I kind of want to talk about big questions. So, um, will the 100% televote stay in the semifinals? Now we've got the full scores, so we can see, you know, um, Iceland and Latvia were the fence, and Serbia was, was the, was the opposing side of that. For Iceland, Estonia was the opposing side of that. That's the Iceland Estonia one is interesting to me because ultimately, you know, Alika, you know, Estonia was able um, to come uh, top 10 at the song contest and we would have and we could have potentially you know, maybe lost that song, you know, because it was on the fence. So I think that's interesting. Um, Latvia and Serbia being on the fence. As much as I love Latvia, I'm glad that we got Serbia in the in the grand final as opposed to Latvia when I look at the whole mix of things. And I I had begun to prepare myself to lose Latvia. So here we are. Um, So, yeah, yeah. um, Estonia, Iceland. Yeah, I know. And I, I didn't say that they were close. I'm just saying that was the that was the gap we had. We had Estonia um, and Iceland. That was that was the gap in semifinal two. Um, and so and again, like like on the cusp, you know, like at the end. But then you're able to finish in the top ten at the grand final. I think that that is something. Um, what is what is this? Um, I don't know. Well, thank you, Gabe. Oh my goodness, thank you. Um, so let me, and then, oh, someone said Malta last was a bit surprising to me. The running order heard it. <laughs> the running order uh, annihilated it. And I will tell you in a, like at the watch parties that we had in Washington, DC, oh, people were just like, how did Malta not make it through? They were like, that was so great. It was so fun. So here we go. So if you ask me, will 100% televotes stay in the semis? Absolutely. I think that that is here to stay, uh, period. Um, I I want to say, you know, I, I just want to say in general, I think that this was like the worst styling. <laughs> you know, it's me, so we got to talk about the clothes. I think that there were some really ugly outfits on the stage. <laughs> I don't know what people were wearing this year. Like, we got rid of Barbadex too soon. Like, if some people needed to be ca- called out for these awful clothes that they were wearing on the stage. Like, I'm going to highlight. I'm just, I'm just going to highlight. Like, Monica, girl, how did you downgrade your clothes from the national final to Eurovision? Why were we wearing that ragged outfit that looked like paper mache and like why were we showing all that thigh meat with them like hooker heels like girl I love you that was not the look Alika why like I hate that outfit and when she first rehearsed she said oh you know my stylist so I'm waiting on where was the other outfit where was the other outfit where were the clothes terrible may muller good god fire your stylist immediately what were you wearing this entire eurovision season i know that i am an old lady at this point and i do not know what is trendy and what is not so this is not about someone being out of style this is about people wearing clothes that just quite frankly did not suit them they were not wearing clothes that suited them and I would say it was like the women with the styling was way worse than the guys. The guys actually gave us some interesting clothes this year. Thank God. You know, we're beyond the era of the t-shirt and the regular pants. I mean, good God. Like, you're on the stage. Can we get some looks? Can we get some looks? I mean, I will I will tell you, Greece mostly not qualified because of that outfit. Why are we going on safari? What was that outfit? What were those clothes? Why are we wearing that? Theodore with no shirt on and a pink short suit. 
sir, like, what, what, I will just say the guys really out, but for the most part, the guys outdid the ladies this year, okay, I just don't know what anybody was wearing, like, it's like, where are you, where the hell are you going, where are you going, where are you going, and also, like, who said that this looked good on you? I mean, just outfits that weren't even flattering, like weren't even celebrating people's figures and shapes. I, I just, I don't know what was going on with the clothes this year at all, at all. And then there were like some clothes where they didn't even bother to get them tailored. Albina's on the stage with these wide leg pants, unhemmed, just dragging on the ground. I mean, <laughs> I just... <laughs> Connor, someone said Ireland. I, oh, wait, I, I thought Alika was dressed well. No, that did not look good on her. She's a young girl. My mother could have worn that outfit. Like, Jesus, the dudes, the dudes, the dudes really came, came through. I will just say, I mean, Ireland. <laughs> Why? Why? Two sizes up. Two. We needed to size it up. Size it up. Okay. Okay. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. But honestly, I could pick. Maybe I should do a thread on Twitter at some point. Like, I hated this outfit. I hated this outfit. I hated this outfit. I mean, best dress. Honestly, I loved what Lorian had on. I liked Blanca Paloma's styling. I thought that that was good. It fit. Um, obviously, Noah looked great. Uh, Marco looked fabulous. You know, Katia obviously looked great. I mean, we've spent a lot of time. I know us, we've all talked about how Alessandra's look was not the look. It wasn't even that she looked bad in it. It just was not the appropriate look for this. It did nothing for her. It did nothing for her. It didn't enhance the performance. It was just like, no, that wasn't the look. I liked what Gustav wore. Obviously, Vorchi. Duh. I probably give, I probably give Vorchi like my best dress out of the men. Like my best dress out of the men. Probably, I, I give it to them. I mean, Lazara. We knew she was gonna do that look, so. I, I, for best dressed lady, I'd be between Lorian and and Lazara. But you know they're serving different, serving different looks. And even my girl Blanca looked cute. Blanca looked cute, but <sighs> but the, the fashions on the stage were a little bit lacking for me. I'd rather have the silver dress done five ways, a little bit because at least those were all cute in the iterations that we got them. But that's just me. That's just me. All right. And then um, staging concepts. Was it just me or did it feel like a lot of the performance? It's like Serbia gave us a concept. Finland gave us a concept. Sweden gave us a concept. Israel kind of gave us a concept. At least we had like a set piece. It felt elevated. But I thought, you know, Israel has done more in the past. To be fair, they've done more. Italy, you know, normally they don't really do staging concepts. So this was probably the most that we <laughs> might get um, from Italy. But I was wondering, where were the immersive experiences in the staging? Uh, like, Moldova's staging could have been more. Um, Slovenia could have done more. You know, Albania hired Sasha and they did enough. But they could have done more. I just felt like... We sometimes get these like immersive experiences, like a good example of an immersive experience, Finland and Australia this year. You know, it's like we're being transported, we're being taken to a place in time, and now we're in this experience. Sweden did it as well. I just felt like a lot of what we got was just like LEDs. I mean, and then Norway was sort of like the non-staging of it all. I mean, they just didn't upgrade at all from the national selection and they really needed to I think I think I think Norway could have been on Sweden's heels if they had maybe just done something a little bit more um, I mean obviously we had a staging experience and concept with Spain duh 
But it's it felt almost like a lot. And even if we're talking about the national selections, not national selections, the semifinals, you know, it was almost like the non staging of it all. And and arguably it was just interesting for me because when we had Lisbon where they were like, we're not going to do LEDs, I felt like we almost had more concepts. So I think there's something to be said for like, yes, LEDs are great, but like, don't don't be lazy. Like, let's still get the immersive experience. I I just I I just I don't know. Um, and then the next thing and this is sort of the last point on my list before we get into the conversation is um, Luxembourg is back, which is great. Luxembourg, I actually think is going to show up. I think I think they're going to give us something good. Like you're not going to come back and kind of lunch it like you're going to come back and like serve, I think. But it begs the question for next year. We need more countries participating. This 37 number. Mm -mm -mm. So I think North Macedonia had already said it was a money thing. So they're likely going to come back. Right. Um, the last time we were in Sweden, Bosnia and Herzegovina participated so I'm kind of hoping that maybe they'll consider coming back maybe I don't know um apparently Turkey has been at the table they've been having the meetings I'd love to see them back I'm gonna give a shout out to Kazakhstan because they've been showing up at junior they've been showing I, they've been showing up at junior so can we can we get them on the line can we get them on the line I'd love to have them back with Eurovision next year if we're bringing back Luxembourg, I think we need like three, four more people coming back, right? We need three, four, three, four. So, I mean, there's a lot. Bulgaria probably isn't going to come back, right? Like, we don't think Bulgaria is coming back next year. I miss them. Come on. Come on. We need, we need, we need symphonics back. We need some symphonics production back with good vocals, interesting songs, you know, and they do, they, even when they do pop, it feels elevated. We need them back. I wouldn't hate Morocco. Uh, Kiar says, what about Hungary? I don't think they're coming back, right? They're not coming back anytime soon. Like Hungary and Bulgaria is probably not happening anytime soon. Uh, Turkey, at least we know there have been conversations, ale uh, uh, like allegedly. Uh, Antonio says, Kazakhstan lost hope. They don't broadcast the show anymore. Ugh. Well, maybe we can get them back. Okay, there's still time. It's early. It's early. It's early. Um... Andorra, I don't need Andorra. Like, if Andorra's going to come and serve, you know, then I'm cool. Yeah, then I'm cool. But um, we have Slovakia. I just don't think it's going to happen, you know? So, yeah. So, But we need, so if you ask me who I really need back, go on and bring, we need North Macedonia. I think Montenegro's going to come back. They had some money issues. So I think North Macedonia and Montenegro just needed to sit this year out because they just didn't have the funds. So I think we're going to get them back. We know we, we know we're getting Luxembourg. And then I would just, I would just say, I mean, I really want Turkey back just because they took the contest so serious. They gave us quality, you know, and typically they gave us something a little bit ethnic, you know, and clearly... Clearly, we need a little bit. We need a little bit more. All right. So that's basically the aftermath from the way that I see it. We've got 10 minutes. I want to hop into your comments. So if you have questions for me specific to what went down at Eurovision 2023 and what's next, uh, please drop them in the chat right now. Uh, I will also just say, if you ask me the question of where do I want to have Eurovision next year, come on, let's just do Stockholm Friends Arena. Friends Arena, Stockholm, let's do it. Because I know some people might go, but like, well, what about Malma? Apparently, Malma didn't make that much money uh, because a lot of people stayed. You know, there, there aren't a ton of accommodations in Malma, so a lot of people will end up having to stay in Denmark and Copenhagen, which is not ideal, especially if you're someone who is there to be on the ground and work. It, it just... It makes it more difficult for that. Um, and then also I would say if we do Stockholm, you know, and and we do it in Solna at Friends Arena, it'll still feel different to 2016 because it's not going to be at Avicii Arena, a.k.a. formerly known as Globen. So it won't be there, uh, likely. You know, so if we do it at Friends, Friends is a huge arena. You know, you can stay out in Solna. And I mean... 
Sweden's so interconnected. Even if you're staying in Stockholm, even if you want to stay in one of the suburbs, you can still make it to friends. So I just think that friends would be the best solution. Having it in Stockholm would be my vote if you ask me. Okay, let me uh, let me hop into these comments. Uh, Maiden agrees with me. Yeah, Friends Arena, make it happen, please. Um, Alicia also agrees, Stockholm Friends Arena, period. Um, dancing to Electro, were you happy with the rest of the world vote results? Overall, yes. I, I mean, overall, I'd say I am happy with what the rest of the world sort of did. I, th- I thought we were going to give a little bit more love um, to Spain. I'll, I'll be real. Yeah, I thought that we were going to give a little bit more love to Spain. Um, but I'm not surprised that um, that Israel sort of came out on top. I, I'm I, Yeah, I'm not surprised. You know, it's poppy. You've got, you know, folks who identify, you know, you've got Israeli people all around the world. You've got people who aren't even from Israel, but who are Jewish, identify with the culture and whatnot. So that makes sense. And then, you know, we we had Finland in second place, which made sense to me, too. It was a fun, rousing song. Um, Ukraine still getting some love. Norway. I mean, it just to me, the rest of the world vote made sense. But I thought that Spain would tick up more. I, I thought that Spain would at least get like five points from the rest of the world, but you know, alas, and you know, the rest of the world, we gave love to Albania. So that spoke to, I guess, my personal taste because this whole time along the way, I've been like, oh, I love Albania. And y'all were looking at me like I was crazy. So I'd say that. Um, Jan, what was your most favorite moment from this year's Eurovision season? Mine was Lorene's uh, victory and the fact that the contest was in the UK. For me, my favorite moment from this year's season, I think it would have to be like between PESMA um, and UMK. Because I've been sort of not watching the national selections. And this year I decided to hop back into national selection world. And just UMK and PESMA were just joyful experiences to follow along. And I just love the music. So I would say that would probably be like my favorite moments were just watching those national selections and watching those national finals in particular. And um, yeah, I would I would say that for me. Um, Renee. Would you like to see the U.S. enter Eurovision? You must be new here. I am very consistent. That is a hard no. Ugh. Hard no. I, I've never been in the camp of us. I have always been in the camp of us. It'd be great to like just be able to vote. And now we can. So I'm living pretty good for that. Wisteria, are you shocked that Serbia underperformed to this degree? And what would you say is the reason? Serbia's song probably needed more of a vocal moment. I would also say that Serbia was slightly sabotaged by the really awful sound. I mean, there were moments where it's like you couldn't even hear him. And he and the mic was he was speaking like the mic was in his in his like face. And you really and you could hear it ever so slightly, but it was just super, super low. Uh, Sean and why Israel snatching all them 12 points up when there was a costume malfunction at the jury final in Spain had a stronger vocal and equally great staging package. I mean, look. Juries are mesmerized by by pop perfection when executed well. You know, so Spain just was too out of the box. Spain was just too out of the box. New on vinyl. Will you go to Sweden next year? Probably. For people who are long in these Eurovision s- streets, y'all know I have tons of friends in Sweden. I visit Sweden even when it's not Eurovision related. So I will probably be in Sweden. Opinions on Austrian flop. Did it really flop though? Like, did it really flop? I I don't, I don't know. I, I think Austria should have staged this completely different. I'm sorry. I I just think the way that it was staged and styled was not leaning into the things that people loved about the entry. It looked serious. (laughs) It didn't look like a fun staging. And I don't know why we had to be 
the song, the subject matter is kind of serious. I don't know why we had to do that. Um, Marianne, let's see how Lorene's wins the real juries after copying Flying High. What is Flying High? What is that? You know, here's the thing that I kind of hate about, like, the like the internet now. <laughs> Y'all realize it allows people who are, like, really obscure to have a voice, in a way. And the way that that's sometimes detracting is then people can go, oh, see, I posted this song on my SoundCloud five years ago and they copied me. Do you think they heard it? <laughs> and went, oh, this is so great. Let's recreate that. Like... Come on, <laughs> like, come on. Um, Callie Stir, I'm pulling for Sarah Don Finer, Oscar Zia, and Tona as host for next year. Tona's resume is not long enough. No, thank you. No, thank you. Um, Sarah Don Finer, I like her, but I, I've said this. I don't. I think I said this in my stream. Um, she sometimes can be too serious when she goes into pre presenter mode, but when she's playing like a character, she's a little bit more fun. Like she goes into like very like I'm playing like the straight man kind of role, like in in hosting, she doesn't do like the jokes. And so I, I don't I don't know. And I, I say this as someone who I watch like random like Swedish like television shows. So I've seen her like present stuff. So sometimes she can run it like too serious. I mean, honestly, I think. I know that some people are saying it won't be Petra and Petra is having like some health issues and whatnot. But here's the thing. If your back is hurting, you can do it in a wheelchair. And and I say this because I'm like, even in a wheelchair, you will probably still be better than like 10 of the other options. And I tweeted this and I get the whole like, let someone else have a chance. Let someone else have an opportunity. I understand where that comes from. But here's the thing that doesn't really fly when you have someone who's the best. Like it doesn't really fly like and, and I'm all for giving people opportunity but when you have someone who's the best at it, like if we were to just have like standing hosts for Eurovision, which I actually think would not be a bad idea, she would have to be at the at the front of the list. So I would say for Petra, we could set up maybe a Graham Norton scenario where maybe she doesn't have to do the semis, but if we could just get her at the final, that that would be the ask that I would pros. I'd be like, girl, we know, but if we could just get you at the final. I would appreciate that. And if her back is hurting, sit up in a wheelchair, like for real, like be comfortable, do what you need to do. Because again, she will still be better <laughs> than most of the people that are options. <laughs> I just love her. Okay. I just, I just love her. Uh, Dr. Ignatius, bring back uh, running order random again. Here's the thing. I'm like of two minds with it. Because I will say, I do think the flow of the show actually felt really good. Like, we went through the show really quickly. I remember 2019 dragged to me. I just felt like it was like, oh, we still haven't gotten to voting yet. Like, it, like everything about that show just felt labored. Um, Time-wise and, and pacing-wise. The pacing was just, like, not great in 2019. So it's hard for me to say, oh, yes, let's have random running order because then we might end up with a show that feels clunky. But then when you have the mess sometimes show up where it's like, oh, it's just nice to just keep everyone on the level playing field. So I'm of two minds with that. Um, I, I will be. Uh, Antonio says, I think it will be Stockholm, but Tele2. I was thinking Tele2, but I just, I think it's going to be Friends. I, I mean, they've been doing Melfest there. It's just so massive, especially with there being such a limitation and high demand of people who want to attend the shows. Do it at Friends. That's going to give you like the bulk of people. I'm Stevan. If we want more concepts on stage, the EBU needs to drop fees for props on stage. Well, the people need to be able to afford it. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. And then let me hop in because there's so many questions. Ah, I'm losing. I'm losing stuff. Ah. Okay, um, so I sort of answered that. So do you want Petra and Mons? I think I've answered it on Petra. On Mons, I don't need Mons to host it again. He already got his chance. We don't need that. Um, Latvia had more votes than Sweden in the rest of the world in the in the Swede, in, in the semi. And that was probably because of me. <laughs> ah, 
Oh, Lord. Okay, Paul, just wanted to say that I really enjoyed your broadcast this season. Didn't always agree with your analysis, but that's what makes it interesting. Thank you. Yes, we don't always have to agree, y'all. I'm not here to, like, preach to you. I'm just sharing my thoughts. And we're having a con- And you, in turn, can share, you know, like, your thoughts with me. That's that's what I'm here for. I want the... I want the two way. Um, I want the two way conversations. Um, okay. So wait, I've, I've like so many questions. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Uh, um. Okay. Okay, Arvin, the fact that both Tele2 and Friends are the three football clubs of Stockholm that don't want to leave the stadium for six weeks, so not sure that they will be chosen. Here's the thing. If Germany in 2011 could have them folks step aside (laughs) Sweden will be telling those people to step aside they can say they don't want to they can say they don't want to but I don't think that it's going to go down like that I don't think it's going to go down like that uh period um yeah (laughs) uh uh Theodore what happened to the American Song Contest it was canceled the ratings were abysmal they did not do what they needed to do to optimize. Um, yeah. Rio, is Melfest presented in Swedish or English? It's presented in Swedish. Uh, but they, I think they've been having English commentators lately. But I typically, I just watch it in, in Swedish. Uh, Antonio, anything that really surprised you? Honestly, the thing that surprised me was Spain. I just, I just didn't, I... That's what surprised me. Now, I know there were some people saying like, oh, it's too unique for Europe and stuff. But I'm like, what was Constracta last year then? Like, I just I just think people pick and choose. Like, I I just think people pick and choose and people didn't pick Spain. I just thought that. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, And Greece's points. Yeah, I mean, Greece. (laughs) Greece was pissed. (laughs) They were like, we just going to throw out some numbers here. Y'all should have had us in the final. Well, hold on. I was going to I was going to flick off the camera, but I won't do that. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, what do you think about Germany flopping? Here's the thing. We knew it was possible. And and let's be real. Like we've said this before. Being in the big five is not an advantage. <laughs> It is not an advantage. You have to work that much harder for people to feel invested in your entry because you're already into the big show. Like, it's just not not an advantage. Um, what do you think Germany should come up with? So, um, Cisordas, what do you think Germany should come up with next year? They took the risk and it didn't pay off this year. Actually, well, here's the thing. And I wanted to kind of say this. Because now we can kind of have a little bit of our conversations of like, what should they have picked instead? Here's the thing. Germany was likely, it could be argued, if I was in Germany, the thing that was kind of missing from the grand final ultimately ended up being like a sad boy anthemic ballad. You know, because we had Switzerland which was just, you know, sort of like a message song. So we had the message song. Um, Cyprus was like, was more power ballad. Lithuania gave us kind of uplifting message song woman. Whereas I would then say Alika gave us like our kind of ballad, you know, kind of singer songwriter ballad. I think that there was space in the grand final for... Show me how to find my way home. I think that there was space for that. Um, but he wasn't even close. I think the other power ballad that they had wouldn't have bested Cypress. So I wouldn't have sent that one. I forgot that guy's name. I think his name was Concrete Heart. Concrete Heart, right? Yeah, wasn't that him? Yeah, Concrete Heart, I think, would have... Um, well, yeah, Concrete Heart, I don't think would have would have done better than Cyprus. So I don't think we had space for that. So the only thing I think Germany could have sent instead was that girl that was in the fields or Will Church. And maybe those could have done something. 
uh, looking at the results, Lithuania, you know, the conversation we had about Ruta Murr. I, looking at these results, I think Lithuania probably did make the better choice in sending Monica just because y'all weren't really seeing it for, for the risky entries. But Ruta Murr's had that 80s vibe and Australia did well. So I don't know. I think we could have had both advance you know we could have had Rudimer I just think that that song was so good I could drive forever nothing's gonna change your mind yeah um yeah so I I think we could have had that um I think there is a conversation of if Agony would have done better than Blanca but here's the thing Spain was really coming trying to win this year and I don't know if like Agony wasn't gonna win Agony wasn't going to win. Finland was going to best them. But maybe Agony could have bested Israel. Because if we're talking about bops and dance breaks and stuff like that, like kind of real pop dancey songs, maybe, maybe Agony could have tripped up Israel. But I, I don't think that they, I mean, like, um, no chintera. That wouldn't have done that wouldn't have done anything at Eurovision this year. No, Vico's song would have done nothing. I always said I could have made a case for Magara, though. Because Magara, I think the crowd that liked Voyager, I think maybe would have felt Magara and could have scooped in there. But they would have killed um Luke Black. Someone Misa Spava, I think possibly, you know, they would have been in the same bucket. So I, I just, I have a hard time. Like, I don't know what Spain could have done that would have bested maybe Agony though. But they wouldn't have won with Agony. They could have maybe come top five sending Agony. That, I think that could be that. That that could be a conversation. Thank you, ESC Dakota. Okay, thoughts on Finland getting 18 deuce points in the televote and Sweden getting... Zero. Um, I believe this for the first, this is the first time that's ever happened. Um, yeah, like the video. Run me my check. No, um, I mean, I, this song was always going to be the tele, to me, I never thought that Lorien was going to win the televote. To be fair, I thought it might even be a, like a hunch for her to get second in the televote. And she did. So this, all this foolish talk about her not being a rightful winner, she came second in the televote. <laughs> uh, like, it's like, well, she's not the people's choice. She was the people's second choice. <laughs> I mean, like, come on, I mean, this is the world we're playing in. I, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Olive Pond, I agree. Alice Wonder was stunning. I mean, I loved Alice Wonder, but we never got a clean vocal from her. She never sung that song properly. So, no, this was all about execution. I wouldn't have put my money on out. Like, I liked the song. I liked the package. But also, too, that was avant-garde and out of the box, too. That might have done worse than Aya. That might have done worse than Aya. Um... Tony, Sweden hasn't come top five in the televote since 2015. I mean, yeah, we know that. That's why I was saying I was even thinking, I was thinking Lorian will just win the jury, come third in the televote, and, and then maybe win. And I was like, and Finland, in order to best her, they would really have to storm the televote, which I thought. And so that was my path of how I was like, no, 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 there's a world where Finland could win. And I think I even said point blank, I was like, Finland ain't come. I was like, Finland should be shooting for fourth with the jury because ain't no way they're coming higher than fourth with the jury because just of what we knew would come above it with the jury, which ended up being right. So, yeah, um, Renee uh, says, Alicia, Michelle, love your Eurovision commentary, but how do you cope post contest hibernating like a disco bear or you got a secret stash of catchy tunes and glitter? Spill the beans. Basically, I go on lots of vacations. I'm not going to lie. So, you know, I'm not, I'm the content y'all will be dry. I do have an interview series coming out 
where if these people respond to emails and get back to me, but I want to talk to past participants of, of the Eurovision Song Contest and really talk about how the contest has evolved since when they last competed. So already I have confirmed I'll probably have a cocoon in a silent tree through the dark night. You listen to me. Yes. I love that song. Stands the test of time. Now I can see. That could compete at Eurovision now. And it wouldn't feel dated. Isn't that crazy? That's what you want. That's what you want. But yeah, no. I go on vacation. I take a break. I take a break. And then somewhat of my post-Eurovision depression becomes fed with, you know, host host uh, city stuff. Host city talk. Um, so I'm, a, I'm into that. Uh... Yeah, okay, we want to have some, uh, so that, oh, here we go. Vasilis, do you still think French language has a place in the contest after their latest results with the exception of 2021? Absolutely, absolutely. French language wasn't the thing that tumbled for Lazara. And apparently, did y'all read that article? Apparently, there was like a whole bunch of drama in the delegation this year. I, I think, you know, some I think some of the conversation is trying to maybe make her out to be like a diva. And I don't think that that's really what's happening. I, you know, I don't I don't think that that's really what went down. But maybe perhaps she was um, not feeling kind of the Eurovision overall experience, perhaps. Um, but no, I don't think that, but French, the song being in French was not what made, you know, Lazara tumble. What made Lazara tumble was the spotty vocal performance. It, it wasn't the spotty vocal performance. And I would say the overall kind of static staging concept that they decided to adopt. That wasn't the right staging package or, or the execution of that staging package was non-optimal. Maybe they should have had her sort of in a rim of stuff. So then she could have had maybe a little bit more support. So then we could have had the pillar doing more. Uh, but it was just, it, it, the song was a bop. And we never ended up really, truly, I think, having that triumphant moment. I think the fandom was giving it some love in the arena but we weren't getting that magic happening on the stage. And that's, that's I think, where, where, where France really went down. Um, yeah, I, I think that's. Uh, Natalie says, well, Grande Amore would have been the right winner in 2015. Once again, jury's favorite average pop song from Sweden. I, I don't, but I don't see Tattoo as an average pop song. I'm here for a conversation of heroes being an average pop song, though, if I'm being fair. Like, I was really thinking Grande Amore was going to win, but I also didn't even, like, I liked Heroes, and I watched Melfest that year, and so I I would have loved Sweden to win just because I was like, oh, I love it, but I just didn't even think Sweden had the momentum to kind of win again. But honestly, in 15, and I, you can look back at some of my videos from that time period, I just feel like... <sighs> This is like, I just think there was some jury mess where they were kind of like, the juries didn't get on the right page. They should have just picked Italy then. And I think that they were getting nervous that maybe people at home weren't going to pick up the phone and call for Grande Amore. So then they were just like, well, what's the thing that people might pick up the phone for that we can give enough points to so then we don't have to go to Russia? <sighs> that was my analysis that year. I was like, they just tried to find the other country where it was like, okay, because we don't want to go to Russia. That's, that's what I thought happened. But I said that I, I'm on record basically saying that. Cause I, I had it, I said it in my videos from like 2016 and, and stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I mean this year, I mean, I, like at the end of it, you know, I have to tell y'all, like, I'm not feeling well today. So I'm starting to get like, hot flashes because I'm not feeling well. But um, I stand by my statement that overall, I do think that this was a mid year. I did the bad thing. I started listening to like the Eurovision 2021 playlist like two weeks before the final and I mean there are some great songs from this year that I love obviously don't get me wrong but I feel like this top 10 
and sort of just what the jury did to me highlighted just how mid of a year this ultimately kind of feels like. Am I alone? Maybe y'all tell me in the comments. I just, it just this result feels like the meal toast, you know, bread, cracker, dry sort of climax of a season where I just think we could have had some more, a little bit more ambition, a little bit more risk. But, you know, but I, I think I've, I've gotten into a place where I think I might always feel this way. Um, ESC Mo says, can we talk a moment, take a moment of, uh, to talk about my beautiful ho hometown, Gothenburg, technically our turn to host and it's a perfect Eurovision city, but our arena is too old. I think because Gothenburg's arena was turned down in 2013, it makes it feel less likely for Gothenburg to be picked. But I love Gothenburg. I've been there. I, I love the city. It's a young city. Uh, there's stuff to do. You know, I, I really like it, but I do think it's likely to be Stockholm. Um, let me see. Um. ESC Dakota, yeah, but Risk was actively punished. Completely agree. Gospel, and should UK and Netherlands bring back the national final next year? I mean, like, the Netherlands has been on a great path. You have, you have like, two boo-boos in the mix of, like, a whole bunch of other, like, hits. So I just think, if anything, next year, just because a Eurovision winner comes to you, says, I have a song, and these are the people who are going to sing it, doesn't mean that that's the optimal choice for you to pick. Um... Sidordas, Finland received the second highest televote score after Ukraine last year, and now it's and now it is the country with the highest televote score that didn't win the contest. I mean, I like a dec decisive televote. Clearly, that's what you're going to have to do. I think just the sad part about having a decisive televote is when you really look at the overall points at the end. I mean, it's just low. Like it's just, it's like damn. I mean, like it's just. But I, but ultimately, I like a decisive televote score because then it allows us to have moments like we had, honestly, with like Italy winning in twenty twenty one. So I'm not, I'm not mad at that. Cult fiction this year seemed weaker than normal to me. I agree with that. Um, uh, Anita, everything outside the top ten, the top six felt weird. It just. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Arvin, after, about debuting countries, just breaking news from Faroe Island broadcaster that just said that they want to join the EBU before summer, so participating in ESC 2024 or 2025, that'd be great. I'm into that. I'm, I'm into that. T, the one, which entries from this year's national finals do you still have on rotation? Oh, my goodness. I'm still listening to uh, Sumi, Sumi, Sumi. I'm still listening to uh, Novi, Plan, Trigi, San. I'm still listening to, um, obviously, um, uh, I could drive forever. Yeah. Um, so, so low. <laughs> um, still listening to that. Nothing from Melfest. Um, oh, still listening to, um, yeah, still listening to that. Honestly, I, yeah, yeah. I, I like a lot of good songs. Oh, I'm, I'm missing some. Oh, um. Oh. I can't even listen to me familia, me familia, because I just get hot pissed on the execution of that. Good God. <laughs> Good God. But I will say after these results, if she had just been able to deliver that competently on the stage, Spain actually might have been in contention with Sweden. I actually, I, I yeah, I, I believe that. I believe that. Um, that. So that's interesting. So if we can find someone who's like, a rapper singer who can actually stay on the pitch and key of the of the song that they wrote maybe we could live in that world good god i can't yeah i can't even listen to it because it just pissed me off um cali stir i thought back in march it was mid but now i'm thinking there were some great songs that i'll continue listening to 2021 and 2022 only few songs are still in my repeat playlist here's the thing like i i but i don't have a lot of things just in repeat playlists to be fair uh but to me like i can go back and listen to 2021 like as a whole I don't really know if I'm going to be listening to this year as a whole. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'll have like, I'll probably have like maybe five songs that stick around. Obviously, Tattoo. The thing is, I would have listened to Tattoo even if it wasn't at Eurovision because I just, I like Lorian. <laughs> so I would have been bumping it too. And I probably would have been looking at our winner and just, and been saying, Yo, if if she had sent this to Melfest and sent it to Eurovision, it would have won. So I probably would have been having 
having that contest. Um, Aiden, every year I still have hope that a country that hasn't won will win. We need, we need a country that hasn't won to win soon. The only country I'll give it to if they keep giving us the quality is Spain. Like, I think Spain's next in line. If they keep doing Benidorm in the way that they're doing it, serving quality, then yeah, like I'm here for Spain getting their due. I'm here for Ireland getting it together and then, you know, t- you know, besting Sweden so then they can, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm here for that, but I also am here. We need a Balkan win. <sighs> Come on, Europe. Can we can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it? Uh, Philip, hopefully the 10th place for Czechia will make our broadcaster give the green light for Eurovision earlier than for this year. What do you mean? What do you mean? Give the green light for Eurovision earlier than for. Oh, did they wait or something? I, I don't recall. I, I, I might have missed. I might have missed that. Um. Yeah, I might have missed that. Uh. Okay. Alicia, you said that you keep your notepads. What were your biggest misses from the 2023 notepad edition? Or maybe like 2017? Um, Well, I don't have them all handy. This notepad... This notepad is last year's. I do have that one handy. But no, I mean, my biggest miss this year, I think it's really obvious. Um... It's just Spain. I really thought that Spain was going to like do stuff. And I th- and I will say to be fair, I thought that Riley's vocal would have been together. Like I thought Denmark really was going to make it because I just thought like, well, on the day, because we've heard him sing live before. So the fact that the vocal was just like not together at all, like, you know, and I, I do get annoyed sometimes when people are just like, oh, well, this didn't hold up. I was like, I was basing my prediction off of people executing it well. <laughs> you know, I'm not going into anything thinking that people are going to get on the stage and hit bum notes and not be on the pitch and key. Like, that's not what I think will happen. I assume that everyone is at minimum going to be able to do that unless they have repeatedly (laughs) not and to me Denmark like Riley at the national selection sounded fine enough no the vocal wasn't perfect but it sounded fine enough and I'm like we've got months to get it perfect so I thought that we would step it up there I thought that Europe would give a uh, a chance um they gave Constracta a chance they gave Goa a chance so to me I thought that that wasn't too far out of the vein um but you know but those would be the things where I missed um I I would say those would be my big misses that I own because I just thought that I thought they would have it together and you know and Denmark did everything they needed to with the staging so you know I, I thought they'd have it together um uh what do you think about I'm assuming that's Israel finishing second with the juries, um, I, I think I already talked about that, so I, I don't want to be redundant. Um, a Ryu, uh, or yeah, Ryu, or Rio, I don't know. Uh, Spanish fans are always great at overhyping their song, it's sad, but the truth. But I'm saying, like, I like the song, I am not a Spanish Eurovision fan. There are some songs that, like, Spain has sent, so I, I wouldn't even say that Spain's one of my favorite countries at Eurovision. Um, and arguably, to be fair, I don't even think the Spanish Euro fans were really hyping their entry that much this year. Because we have to remember there was a ton of discourse of, of Spanish Euro fans saying that they thought Agony would do better at Eurovision. And, you know, honestly, maybe they're right. Uh, may- yeah, maybe maybe they're right. Uh, it would have maybe it would have done better. Australia finished ninth and won semi two SBS um, and the EBU will be in talks now. I guarantee I, I look. I don't I didn't think that Australia was gonna not be in talks if you were like believing that this was like their last year like I I think it was more more likely um AA you said Luke would win too I said that he had winner potential when I heard the song it gave me winner potential vibes but that was before we had the the landscape once we had like the landscape once we knew Lorien was coming for for Sweden and once we knew that Katia was going to be repping Finland, you know, so, I mean, I can say a lot of things, you know, 
like when you don't have the la- the landscape. So like all of that stuff has to be taken with a realistic grain of salt because, you know, ultimately it comes down to like what are what are the rest, you know, what are we going to have? Um, uh, Augusto, I don't think that Agni would have done better than Blanca. But I think there are some people who think that. I, I think some people would think that. And yeah, we'll see. Uh, Mark, are you worried that uh, the UK and Germany could fall back into old habits after these bad results? No. I, I, Germany's national selection actually wasn't garbage. They just had that one guy, I don't even know, like Ike, Ika or something, that we couldn't send him to Eurovision. That would have been awful. Germany would have come last. Actually, maybe they wouldn't have. Maybe people would have been like WTF and picked up the phone and called for it. I don't know. I, and, you know, that's how y'all think the televote acts anyway. So maybe... Maybe that's the case. Um, and, and for the UK, to be fair, they're already talking like May did us proud and stuff. Th- so they're not doing the the narrative that they normally do. You know, and the reason why May didn't do as well was because her vocal wasn't together and she was styled like an old lady going to a funeral. <laughs> I just, I don't know what she was wearing. And, and the vocal was never there. The vocal was just never there. And she wasn't doing a whole lot. Like... You can get away with having, like, I'll give you some grace for a bum note here or there if you're doing something. She wasn't doing anything. It, it had, the vocal needed to be perfect, and it wasn't. Uh, Basilis, would you like to see the representatives of the Netherlands 2014 to return to the content? No. You must be new here. No. I would, I would not. I would not like them to return. This is why I got to read comments before I put them up. No. Um, okay, what? Oh, oh. Eurovision showed a huge gap between Latin Europe and the Nordics, Eastern Europe in terms of taste. Huge difference. Um, and uh, uh, try da filos. I just wish next year we will get not only out of the box songs, so big master. P- we will not get only out of the box songs. So big masterpieces like the Cha Cha song or Mamash. I don't think I'm. So you don't want out of the box songs? We need more out of the box songs. I don't, I don't know. Um, in Vino Veritas, do you think Gladiator would have done better for Poland? Looking at the results, probably not. Looking at you know, looking at what people picked up the phone for, I'd say, and and what juries were favoring, I'd say probably. Not, I, I don't think. I mean, here's the thing. Blanca did pretty well, <laughs> ultimately. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, boop, boop. Um, uh, Olipon says Will Church would have won a lot of jury votes. Maybe not a lot, but I think he could have gotten some. I think there was a space like for me I, and I said this earlier I don't want to be redundant looking at the results I think there could have possibly been a space for Will Church um MC how do you feel about being hated for not hating on Lorian or Katia it's sad how these so-called fans cannot love the contest despite the winner um I'm 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 being hated on <laughs> am I being hated on right now I don't I don't know because I'm I, but I like both of their entries. So uh, to me, the results were reflective of of both of them serving something quality like for Eurovision. So I don't I don't think I'm getting hated on. Not I, you know, I, you know I I don't I don't know. Um, juries need to be twenty five percent and televoters uh seventy five percent. They'll never do it that much that way. Sixty forty is a realistic ask. I think 60-40 should be the breakdown. SV, Serbia was way too futuristic for Europe at the moment. That's how I'm coping with the result. Yeah, maybe. It was just too forward thinking. But it could have had a vocal moment. We could have structured the song to where it could have been slightly more melodic vocally, you know, for Luke. And he's got a great voice, so we could have done that. Um, El Interesante Mundo. (laughs) After commercial radio-friendly generic songs seem to succeed this year, do you think we are saying goodbye to out-of-the-box entries next year? I think we'll have less. I think we'll have less. I I do. I I think we'll have less. Um, On My Own says, I'm seeing a path of Portugal winning for the second time soon. I wouldn't hate that. 
I wouldn't hate that. Mark, uh, opinions on Ireland's decision to do a bigger national final. I would love that. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. But here's the thing. They basically already kind of did a national selection in the Late Late Show format. And the people chose, we all want... Well, it was tied, right? Wasn't that what it was? They were tied. And so then it went to like their like little jury situation. I think that Ireland should do what Czechia does. Let everybody else, let Europe vote for, for your song. That's That's just, if they're going to do a national selection... They should open it up and let everybody vote. That's what I think. Um, uh, Anita, everyone was expecting to see her fail, and she did pretty well for what the song was. And I think you're referencing Blanca, and I, I agree with that. Um, Mixton, it's curious how risky entries have been appreciated by both juries and Televote over the past years. And this year, almost all commercial songs were at the top of the scoreboard. Board. Yeah, I said that earlier. Yeah. Um, Italy could have received more from the jury, slightly undervalued by the bookmakers. Um, I think that Italy came right where they needed to come with the juries. I think Italy came right where they needed to come with the juries. I think it's just crazy to me that this was the year that the juries decided to wake up to Italy. I hope this is a trend because I think Italy more often than not gives us quality. So I I love to be living in the world where Italy actually gets some jury recognition. That was the one refreshing thing about most of the foolishness that they saddled us with this year. Um, ESC Dakota, I feel like Lorian has to do statements in the interval act. She will. She better. Come on, right? The Jabba, in my opinion, it would be the end of the world of Petra may, if if Petra doesn't host again next year. I think that we should have Petra at the grand final. Let's do the Graham Norton treatment. That's what I would love. Girl, like we need you. We need you. She's just so good. She's just so good at it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just crazy. Like, and and the thing is, it's like year after year, like ever since 2013, honestly. When I watch these hosts, I have been flabbergasted at how awful some of them are. And, and it really, it's bad because when you see someone do it so well with seemingly such ease, like, because it's hard work. This is not, it's not easy to man and hold it down for that long of a show. Like, it's a lot of investment. And ugh. yeah, um, yeah. Love from Ireland, uh, yeah, love from an I, I, from an Irish person in Switzerland. Uh, heartful thanks to you, Alicia, for your vital contributions to an enjoyable Eurovision season. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we know Veritas, Will and, Ani, and um, Annika or Anika would have done. Uh, that's what I said. The girl in the fields. Anika was that girl. Anika Russo. Annika Russo. Yeah, her. She was in the fields. Uh Alicia, what do you think of France finishing only 16th? I think this result was was high too low. Or maybe like high key too low. If you cannot sing your own song live consistently. And you know what's so funny? Because if there was drama, because if there was drama, because I never thought that she would have vocal issues. Like I never thought that she was that girl. And I almost was one. And, and then it was funny because... Like, the best time she sounded was, like, the jury show. It, it wasn't perfect, but that was, like, the best she sounded. But then in the final, she sounded good. It almost made me feel like, oh, were you just on purpose, like, singing it with bum notes? Because, like, you wanted to, like, poke or something? Like, I don't know. Like, because she didn't seem to be someone who would not be able to be on the pitch in the key. I don't know, but it was the static staging. The staging wasn't ambitious enough, and and we know juries like stage things. We we know that. Um, we we know that. Um, Roberto, do did you think Blanca Paloma was gonna do better in the jury vote? Well, yeah, I I already did. I already answered that. I answered that. Um, okay. I think. Oh wait. Um. How should EBU use the money collected with rest of the world vote? I mean, it costs a lot of money to put this stuff on and, you know, and they have to pay people. So, yeah. Um, thank you, Marco. Jack fan, I'm sad for Malta. They don't deserve only three points. I mean, we knew it was going to be an uphill battle for them. 
we knew it was going to be an uphill battle. ESC Dakota, thoughts on backing track. Cypress, Poland, and others relied on them so heavily this year, and it feels like it's really going to change the contest. You know, oh, t- Tony says, hold on real quick. Barbara staging was static in 2021, but the camera angles were inventive. It felt interesting. It, it just, it fit everything. This was a bop, and they didn't really utilize the cameras in that way it didn't feel like the party that the song is at the end of the song like the audience was giving that but we weren't really seeing it on the stage yeah so back to it i I need these backing tracks gone but honestly with sweden hosting it next year they're not going to take them away because they already use them in melfest so i don't think that they're going to be the folks to take it away i think if we do i think if portugal wins soon i could see them doing it I could see Portugal being like, nah, nah, you're going to have to sing live. <laughs> like, they're a country I could see being like, mm-mm, mm-mm, we're not going to do that. Um, uh, Oscar, thank you for the money. <laughs> thank you. In my opinion, Sweden deserved to win No Hate to Finland. Look, everyone, like, ultimately, everyone deserved to win. Uh, Well, maybe not everyone. Some people did more than others. (laughs) But I will say the bulk of these performers deserve to win. You you get to this stage, you do it. it, it, Like, look, this is subjective. Musical taste is subjective. So I think we were always going to be living in a world where, and and every year there's going to be like, oh, so-and-so deserved it, so-and-so deserved it. They all deserve it. If you get on that stage... You you aren't lip syncing. You are singing your butt off. If you wrote that song, if you're doing all this kind of inventive stuff on the stage, you deserve to win the Eurovision Song Contest. The only people who don't deserve to win it are people who hit bum notes, are real lazy with the staging, <laughs> you know, bought a song, didn't even contribute to the, you know, just bought a song. You know, like I'd be here for like those conversations. But if you singing that song live, hitting them notes, if you are hitting them notes and dipping and doing it, if you wrote your song, if you are a creative force behind your entry, then you deserve it. And on that note, I'm going to have to bring this to a close. And thank you, I am Stavon. He ran away. He ran away. I was going to marry him. <laughs> On that note, here's to the end of our Eurovision 2020, 2023 season. I'm ready for Eurovision 2024. I'm ready for Eurovision 2024. Don't bore me to death, all right? Don't bore me to death. You never really do. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who joined this stream. If you're watching on the replay, if you haven't already liked this video, please subscribe. If you love the Eurovision Song Contest, you want to stay locked, locked, locked and loaded. Because I'm telling you, I actually do have some content coming for you. So this post Eurovision 2023 season, I'll still be giving you some gems. And if you aren't following me on TikTok and Instagram, please do. Because I'll be putting out content there. Hmm. We turn the page.